I don't like it, I tell you. It was in just such a fog as this that the Yankee maiden went down with all hands save two off Cape Hatteras. Aye, and I'll bet you put the blame on that monstrous thing that's supposed to be roaming the seven seas of the world, sinking ship after ship. Think what you like, William Land. Nobody's yet explained proper how the Yankee maiden sank there in the fog with not enough of a breeze blown to even ruffle her sail. Well, show me one of your sea monsters, matey, and I'll gladly split my earnings from this voyage with you, provided we ever get to the whaling grounds. Maybe we'll get there, and maybe we won't. I only know with this blasted fog and no wind, we're like a sitting duck. I don't like it, I tell you. Well, I'm due to take over the fog watch, and I'll let you know if your sea monster should come alongside, bruising for a fight or anything. Young whippersnappers. They'll learn. Someday they'll learn about them terrible, terrible creatures living deep down in the sea. Mr. Abel! Mr. Abel! Mr. Abel! Look! Nothing I'd ever seen before. Quick, you! Run in and get the captain. He'll be at the wheel. It's too late. It's going to be on us before anything can be done. has sent me here to New England to learn as much as I can about these terrible sea disasters. Oh, Mr. Hansen, Mr. Hansen, if you'll just listen to me. But I can't make any judgments if you all continue shouting at the same time. I was there. I was aboard her, aboard the Anna Marie, when she was struck and her powder magazine blew up. I tell him good how it was, mate. And maybe something can be done to rid the seas of whatever it is that's shaken our ships and killing our men! It's not just our men. The president has received special reports from all over the world. What could it be that could travel those great distances? There's nothing to fraught with that kind of speed. We're cursed, cursed, I tell you, with some monster from the deep out to sweep the seas of all ships. Oh, now, 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 that's utter rot, my man. You have no proof. There is a logical explanation for the sinking. You mark my words, Mr. Politician, or whatever you are. If something isn't done to protect our seamen from whatever it is out there, you'll soon see the day when nary a ship will up anchor and sail from Gloucester or any other port around the world. You have the word of the President of the United States. Something will be done, but we must have more than just rumors. We must have a sensible theory from someone who knows what he's talking about. Ah, there will be no such man. No man can tie a tag to what's behind the sinking of a whaler as strongly built and seaworthy as the Anna Marie. Are any of them on a dozen ships you said have been sunk? Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. We have reason to believe there is such a man, an authority on marine research from France. All test tubes and fancy gadgets he is, I'll bet. What would he know about sea monsters and such? His name is Professor Pierre Aronnax. He is doing some special research for the Boston Marine Institute. I have an appointment with him this afternoon. Now, if you gentlemen will excuse me, please. Tell the professor he won't find what's sinking them ships in one of his books in the laboratory. not want to see any more reporters. I have nothing more to say to the press now. Go away and leave me alone. Uh, 
Professor Pierre Evernex. I warn you. If you are a reporter, sir, I most certainly am not. I, sir, am Mr. Richard Hanson. I am chairman of a special committee appointed by the President of the United States, Mr. Andrew Johnson, to investigate and eliminate the cause of the many sea disasters which threaten our ships and sailing men, all ships and sailing men around the world. You hear all that? And in one breath? Oh, obviously, Professor Aronnax, you do not appreciate the seriousness of the situation. My country has lost as many, if not more, ships than the United States, Mr. Anderson. My apologies, Professor. Sir, I have heard from several reliable sources that you have a theory concerning the alleged monster responsible for the attacks. Now, please, let me show you a drawing I have recently completed. It will help you to understand what I am talking about. What you see here is the Arctic narwhal, a species of whale which has a long, spirally twisted tusk extending forward from the jaw. It looks something like a unicorn. Generally, the now whale reaches a length of some 25 feet or so. Its tusk has been found buried in the planking of ships, bedded in the bodies of fish and other mammals. <gasps> Professor Aranax, are you suggesting? I have no proof, mind you, Mr. Hanson, but. Suppose we are faced with a giant narwhal, a monster of several hundred feet, with a tusk with the hardiness of steel, capable of penetrating the hull of any size vessel. Oh, would you mind if I sat down for a moment, Professor Aronnax? Then you believe this theory of mine does have possibilities? Oh, I most certainly do, Professor Aronnax. And I must return to Washington. I have specific recommendations to make to President Johnson. Recommendations of what nature? The frigate Abraham Lincoln is to be outfitted for a sea voyage of no set duration. In fact, as her captain, you are ordered not to return to your home port until you've either sighted and destroyed the killer narwhal or have sufficient proof that it does not exist. You will be accompanied on your mission by Professor Pierre Aranex, etc., 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 etc. Well, welcome aboard, sir. I only hope we're not embarking on a wild goose chase. <laughs> Mr. Anson has no doubts about the existence of the giant now, well. Mr. Anson is not going with us. Uh, Mr. Hanson is a politician. Politicians never set foot on a naval vessel if they can avoid it. What's going on? Who is that man? Oh. I want this man arrested immediately. How dare you to lay hands on me, sir? Have you any idea who I am? None. But I am Ned Land, the finest harpooner on the seas today. And when I heard a ship was being outfitted to chase a giant killer narwhal... Ned Land? Then your brother... ...was aboard the Anna Marie when she was attacked. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. This is Captain Farragut, captain of the Abraham Lincoln, and Professor Pierre Aronnax. You believe there is such a monster, Professor? Without a question. All the more reason why you need me with you on this voyage. Watch. Well, Professor Aronnax? Well, Captain Farragut? Well, I can see we have no other choice than to include Ned Land. All hands prepare for immediate departure! Uh, not before I go ashore. <laughs> By your leave. And now, Professor Aranax, let us see what we can do about tracking down and destroying this monstrous narwhal of yours. Fair skies and a good wind. This whale would be no respecter of waters, Ned. He could be possessed of a killer instinct which would drive him to the very ends of the earth. Naples, Italy, where we have stopped for water and provisions. As usual, Professor Aranax is questioning everyone he meets. 
the Saint Tabrioni sighted something in the fog. Something lying a monstrous and a black in the water. But before they could get close, it was a gone. And this was down the coast of Africa. Two days out of Cape Town, Signor Professor. Thank you, Captain. We'll follow your lead. I just pray that Captain Farragut doesn't have to take the Abraham Lincoln around the Cape of Kuro. Would have it, we've been forced to take the short route around the Cape of Good Hope. Rumors. In every port there are rooms. Men who have sighted the monster. Men whose ships have been destroyed by the monster. And still. And still. It's like some phantom nightmare. Something that really isn't there. But you know it is. It is very difficult to practice patience, but we have no other choice. I vowed that someday I would sink this iron into the heart of whatever it was that sank the Anna Marie and killed my brother. I know. I know, my friend. And I appreciate your sentiments. But we have been combing the seas for almost a year. We cannot give up. We must give up. Something will stop. This may be it. Where is it, mate? Where is it? Just give me room to get my arm back with this harpoon. It's there. And coming in fast. Helmsman, swing her hard to starboard. That's not an hour. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Stand aside. Stand aside. It's going to pass right under our bow. Now, then. Now. You have a clear shot of it back. And sink your harpoon in the deep, man. Deep as you can. It's swinging in a circle and coming at us again. Professor Ararat, look. There's nothing I know of that swims in the sea with a hide tough enough to bend an iron harpoon. Throw her to part, man. Hard as you can. Our only chance is to try to escape in the fog. It's coming in like a thunderbolt. Professor Aronax, get away from the rail, man. I have got to see it, whatever it is. I have got to see it. Stay clear to stop it. Here it comes. Step back or you'll get pitched overboard when it hits Professor Aronax. Hold easy, Professor. I have a good grip on you. They, they won't be able to find us in this fog. Ahoy! Ahoy! Aboard the Abraham Lincoln! Save your breath, Professor. We don't even know how badly she was damaged when she was hit. Professor, look! What a pose! They're both coming out of it very nicely. They blacked out partially from the shock. The old man's eyes are open. Please help me to sit up. I'm all right. Easy. Easy there. You've been through a rough experience. Yes. Ned Land, are you all right, Ned? I've never seen a whale like that in all my years at sea. Where am I? Professor Aronax! No, no, just don't start swinging, mate. Or you'll spatter us all over the walls of our own sick bay. Sick bay? Then we were picked out of the sea by a ship. But what were those things that put a helmet over my head? Uh, just rest. You'll know soon enough. Who are you? What manner of ship is this? We must be put ashore immediately to report the attack on the Abraham Lincoln. All in good time, lad. All in good time. No, not all in good time. Now, 
We demand to speak to your captain now. You will meet him later. First, you must both rest. A cabin has been prepared for you. I must admit, these are unusual accommodations. Our captain certainly has extravagant taste. Captain Nemo cordially invites Professor Pierre Aranax and Master Ned Land to be his guests for dinner in the Grand Salon. If you'll follow me. I think I may be having hallucinations, Ned. Or do you hear what I hear? Professor Pierre Aranek and Master Ned Land. I trust every comfort has been afforded you. And now we will enjoy dinner together. Before we accept your hospitality, sir, I believe you owe us an explanation in regard to several matters. Captain Nemo, perhaps you are not aware of the attack made on our ship, the Abraham Lincoln, but... I am very aware of that attack, Professor, because it was my ship, the Nautilus, which attacked the Abraham Lincoln. Your ship? Why, you... You are an impetuous man, Master Lamb. But I advise you to curb your temper. May we have a demonstration, please? Very early Greek, found in some submerged ruins off the island of Minos. Pity, but uh, it served its purpose. Gentlemen, I planned a most unusual dinner in your honor. Will you join me now? Utilizing certain chemicals from the sea, I've been able to produce a constant source of electric power. It is this power which propels the Nautilus and supplies us with light, heat. Ah, the soup, Professor Aranax, is made from a rare species of mollusk found only in the depths of the Red Sea. Since the Nautilus operates in many different climes and under many uh, unusual conditions, I found it necessary to install a method of circulating either warm or cool air throughout the entire vessel. What appears to be beefsteak, gentlemen, is, um, in reality, a new variety of sea cow, which we keep in underwater corral exclusively for food purposes. I'm glad you enjoyed the fruits from our undersea orchard, and I would like you to see them during the season of harvesting. Prepare yourselves for the astonishing sight which lies behind these pants. Captain Nemo, am I to understand? Professor Aranax, Master Lamb, behold, my world. Yeah, beneath the surface of the sea. In a ship that travels underwater. I call the Nautilus a submarine. This is the world I'm seeking to preserve. The world for which I gave my genius to the invention and building of the Nautilus. Feast your eyes upon it, gentlemen. Preservation? At the cost of sinking ships? Not ships, Professor Aranax. Destroyers. The destroyers, the polluters. The whaling ships which are decimating the herds of whales. The trawlers with their nets gathering not only the fish they need, but fishers never meant to be so cruelly harvested and then thrown back, dead and rotting. Waste. Ruthless, unnecessary waste. Man must eat. Even you serve fish at your dinner table. We take from the sea only what we can use, nothing more. And we do not pollute the sea. Dump tons of ashes into the water like the new steam vessels crossing the oceans. It is progress you are fighting. The Nautilus does not pollute. I will show you what I seek to protect. We will walk together through that undersea world. 
I will show you. We are going to walk on the floor of the sea? There are valves on the side of your helmet to adjust the flow of air. We are able to communicate with each other, so please listen carefully to all my orders when we are on the sea floor. There are many, many dangers of which you are not aware. Helmet, please. That I can never repay. It can easily be repaid, Captain Nemo. Put us ashore. I'm sorry. If I were to allow you to leave, you would expose all you know, destroying the dream to which I have dedicated my life. Please, promise me you won't try to escape. Please, not right now. Can't you understand the scientific value of the notes I'm taking on everything we have seen and done? And if the good captain should decide to attack another ship? We will face that predicament when it arises. Meanwhile, grant me the privilege of learning as much as I can of this remarkable man and the Nautilus. I can hardly believe my own figures. We have traveled close to 10,000 leagues during the past six months. 30,000 miles. The Nautilus is faster than any vessel afloat. Captain Nemo says we will be hove to off a small island by nightfall. All I want is just a little more time, Ned. No, Professor Aronnax. This is the perfect opportunity for our escape. We cannot wait any longer. At any moment, Nemo may attack another ship, and more lives will be lost. Much as I to admit it, you are probably correct. I have allowed my scientific curiosity to get the better of me. What is your plan? We must wait until we're certain that everyone aboard is asleep. Then, if we can reach the deck and unlash the small boat, I can't believe it was all that simple when we finally decided to escape, and here we are. If you ask me, it was much too simple. Almost as if...
Captain Nemo wanted us to escape. There wasn't even a man on watch on deck. Well, we won't take any chances. By dawn, we should be far away from the good Captain Nemo and the crew of the Nautilus. I only wish we knew something about this island. Save your breath. You'll need it. We have a lot of heavy traveling ahead. Follow me. You've wanted all along, isn't it? Just... Look! We're done for! Perhaps Captain Nemo's sense of the dramatic to arrive in the so-called Nick of Star. <laughs> Captain Nemo, we must submerge immediately! There's a pack of bloodthirsty savages right on our heels! Yes, I knew that sooner or later you'd discover them. And vice versa. You knew? And you knew all along what would happen. I merely felt that you needed to cleanse yourself of your obsession to escape. The first of the canoes is approaching the Nautilus, sir. Will you join me? Well, this promises to be most amusing. But tell the chief engineer to stand by for my command from the bridge. Aye, aye, sir. A rather shocking reception has been arranged for them. Chief Engineer, throw the main switch, please. Now, gentlemen, be careful not to stir from the rubber matting on which you are now standing. And observe. I promised you an amusing scene. I hope you enjoyed it, and will now forget any future plans to escape. There are many things which we need to replenish aboard the Nautilus, and there is an annual Christmas ritual in two weeks which we must observe. We will leave immediately for our home base of operations, off the coast of Spain in the Mediterranean. The Mediterranean, Captain Nemo? But that would mean we must go down and around the Cape of Good Hope and up the coast of Africa. Even at the speed the Nautilus travels, we couldn't cover that distance in less than three or four months. Both of you are correct. However, we shall not be going around the Cape. I know of a much shorter, much more interesting route. It is approximately here on the chart. A secret tunnel which passes under Arabia to the Isthmus of Suez, and hence into the Mediterranean. Prepare to get underway. Those lights you see are creatures of the tunnel who have adjusted to the perpetual darkness by supplying their own illumination. Incredible! What other kind of creatures can we expect to meet in that tunnel? The Nautilus has traveled it many times, Master Land. Relax. Put down your harpoon. There is absolutely no danger. Switch to the night running lights. 
I have discovered that a red light permits you to see much, much more within the blackness at the top. immediately. What is happening? That noise. An underwater disturbance. Earthquake. The tunnel is collapsing. Just breathe slowly and easily. You'll be all right. It's like being in the darkest pit out there. I had to feel my way along the length of the Nautilus. There's no chance of digging through the cave-in, either at the bow or stern. I tried pushing an iron pike into it. I lost the pike in the rocks and mud and debris. Don't lose heart, lad. We've been in tighter corners than this before and came through safely. Oh, I only wish I believed what I told that young lad in the diving chamber. With the Nautilus unable to get up any speed, either backward or forward, we have no chance of ramming our way through those walls. How long will the air supply last? Another 12 hours, 14 at the most. I refuse to accept the fact that we must die like rats in this miserable tunnel. There must be a way to free the Nautilus. The professor refuses to stir from our cabin. He's racking his brains trying to come up with some solution. Even our supply of candles is limited. We will soon be left in utter darkness, inside as well as outside. Has anything been taken to the professor to eat or drink? I'll do that now. I'm the only one he'll allow in the cabin with him. He calls it his private think tank. May his thoughts be fruitful before it's too late. Steward, prepare a tray of food and some wine for the professor. No, no, not wine. A bottle of champagne. Our very best vintage. The very least I can do for him. The captain's compliments, sir. Food and the finest vintage champagne. Take it away. I can't eat. I must think. Think. Just a taste, Captain. Perhaps the bubbles will give you spiritualist, Professor. It can't be. It just can't be. It was there all the time, staring me at the face, and I didn't see it. Professor Aronax, are you all right? All right. I am fine, Ned, fine. We must get to Captain Nemo as quickly as possible. There's very little time left for us to free the Nautilus, but it can be done. It can be done. It can be done. It will be dangerous. Extremely dangerous, Captain Nemo. We must use every vent to the outside to force as much air as we can into the tunnel. All of us could suffocate from lack of air. But before that happens, we can only pray that we will build up a sufficient force of pressure in the tunnel to destroy the earthquake fall either in front or behind the Nautilus. And we will be propelled to freedom like a cork from a bottle of vintage champagne.
did it, Ned. We did it. You did it, Professor. Listen, the motors. I can't hear any motors. That's just the point I'm making. There are no motors. They've stopped. And if they've stopped, that means we're on the surface. Ned, 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 will you never rest until you've escaped from the Nautilus? Are you going with me? Or must I go alone? You know I won't let you go alone. Much as I want to stay aboard the Nautilus. Then put on your shoes and wrap your notes carefully so you won't lose them. We must hurry before the crew begins to stir. Much as I loathe it, I knew I had to bring you here. Captain Nemo! We... we knew the Nautilus had surfaced. And you entertained the vague hope that perhaps this might be where we would part company? My apologies, gentlemen. But the air grill in your cabin leads directly to a similar grill in my quarters. What is this unspeakable place? The Sargasso Sea, graveyard of ships. Ships that have drifted here from the seven seas of the world. Wrecked vessels the winds have brought here. The refuse of the oceans, rejected, exiled here to rot and decay through the centuries. The Sargasso Sea. The few men who have been here and returned speak of it with horror. Can't you understand what this desolation means to me? It represents all that I despise. The destroyers. The polluters. Look around, Professor Aranax. It will not happen in your day or mine, but the day will come when all the oceans of the world will be like this. Unless we stop all those who knowingly seek to obliterate all that is beauty, all that is purity, all that is life. If there is a seaman's nightmare, then this is it. I'm glad you understand, my giant friend. Ned! Watch out! Behind you! Stand away, Professor. Give me a clear shot at the monster. Do what you can to cover for me. Perhaps I can convince you, gentlemen, to remain permanently aboard the Nautilus. I'm afraid not, Captain Nemo. I have my own work to do ashore, Captain. Like you, I too am a dedicated man. What a pity. So much awaits you out there in my world. We will escape at the first opportunity. I regret you feel this way. We've gone through so much together. But I shall never let you escape. You see, Yes, what is it, man? Didn't I ask not to be disturbed? Report from control, Captain Nemo. A ship has been sighted, a whaler. Appeared like a ghost, she did, out of nowhere. A whaler? They dare to enter these waters? Captain Nemo. Yes, Master Land. Let them go. And let us go. You have my word that we won't reveal any of your secrets. Please, please listen to him, Captain Nemo. The whaler is turning into the wind across our bow. Captain Nemo, you can't. Well, this should be good sport for us. Come along topside, gentlemen. Let's have a look at this mysterious vessel. Captain Nemo, if you attack that whaler, we will escape. Have my solemn vow, we will escape. <laughs> <laughs> 
She's turning broadside to us, Captain. Gentlemen, are you coming with me? We're just off the coast of Norway, but she's not a Norwegian. Filthy-looking tramp of a ship. She's like no whaler I've ever seen. She can't be from an American port. And she's settled too low in the water to be found. Got my word for that. Run out the ram! Captain Nemo! Merely a precautionary measure, Master Land. She's just sitting there, so quiet. Too quiet. Captain Nemo, sir! She's changing! Look! She's not a whaler! She's a gunboat! Yes, she's a gunboat, Master Land. Pirates! Prepare for immediate battle! I must ask you gentlemen to go below immediately. She's firing at us! Captain Nemo, let me help you. You there! Help the captain below at once. Can't you see he's been wounded? Aye, aye, sir. Lean on me, please, Captain Nemo. We must prepare to dive. Get everyone below. That ship's going to fire another round. We must get below. Professor, this may be our last chance to escape. No one will notice that we've even gone. Uh, my papers, my notes. I must have time to go below and get my papers. No, there's no time. Hand me my harpoon. to safety. That shot she took of the chips. It must have hit her controls. She can't dive. She's turning away from the whaler. At least Nemo can still maneuver her. We're coming in between two small islands. They'll hide us from the Nautilus. Nemo spotted us. They're coming after us. No. I think he's trying to make for the safety of this passage between the islands, too. What's he pointing at? He looks like he's trying to warn us about something. Ned, Ned, what is it? Why are you turning the boat? I'm not. I'm not. There's something doing it. Look! He died. It's changing. The incoming tide on one side, the outgoing tide on the other. They're creating a whirlpool, and we're being pulled towards the center. Why doesn't Nemo get the Nautilus away from here? I don't think he can turn her. She was too badly hit. She'll never make it through the maelstrom. I can't row against it. It will pull us in, too. Ned, you're a boon. If you can hit one of those trees on that island. This is our only chance. Pray as you've never prayed before, Professor. I we need every ounce of your strength. Pull for your very life. Ned, look. Jeez, no. She's gone. Everything is gone. Captain Nemo, the Nautilus. Somehow. I want to believe they pulled her out of the whirlpool to safety. But the world will know. We can prove that there was a Captain Nemo and the Nautilus. I'm afraid not, Ned. My notes, every paper I had, went done with the Nautilus. Even so, we can tell them about his dream. I wonder if anyone will listen or believe what he said, standing in that graveyard of ships in the cold gray dawn. Look around, Professor Aronnax. It will not happen in your day or mine, but the day will come when all the oceans of the world will be like this. Unless we stop all those who knowingly seek to obliterate all that is beauty, all that is purity, all that is life. Yes, Captain Nemo. All that is life.